Hey, flaggers, welcome back to Come Flag With Me. I'm doing a Bible study today, and it was a Bible study that a friend of mine was talking about in another interview, and I thought, okay, wait a minute. God gave me that same almost exact thing that you're talking about, only she did hers months ago. We never discussed it, and I thought, okay, that's odd. Okay, and the Lord said, your time come on get up there kid grab your bat get up to the bat plate so I'm up to the plate we're gonna talk about flagging in the Bible and I know I know you heard this all the time you've heard all the same verses over and over again well I got something a little bit different that I think you all might find a little bit interesting it's what the Jews did in the Old Testament when it came to flags eh, there are some instances of flags and I think you guys would find it interesting so y'all need to come back to come flag with me welcome back flaggers to come flag with me so what about these these flags the Israelites used what kind of flags did they use did they use cloth from someplace did did they go on the internet and get some pretty stuff where in the world did the Israelites find these flags that are written in the Bible hmm did they make their own flags Huh? Did they order fabric in from Egypt? What did they do? Huh? So, flaggers, where do you guys think the Israelites would have gotten the first flags? Uh, what do you guys think? Huh? Maybe they got it from... Maybe they turned to nature yep that's right flaggers you are looking at the very first flags that were ever invented by the israelites yep i know what you all are thinking wait a minute a tree a tree is a flag a tree like this yep here is your first flag right here that's right, flaggers, the very first flags were actually tree branches. Oh, I know, they were tree branches. They weren't material. The very first ones that God commanded the Israelites to use were tree branches. So I want you all to open up your Bibles and let's go to Leviticus. Let me get my thing, my glasses. Leviticus 23, and it starts in 33. And God's talking, talking about the Feast of Tabernacles, in which he's telling them to put together some booths. And then he says, in verse 40, You shall take the first day the branches of the majestic trees, the branches of the palm trees, the branches of the leafy trees, and the willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. In other words, they were told to flag for seven days. <gasps> I'm sorry, I can't come into work today. I have to flag for seven days. Oh my gosh, I'm there. Y'all would love that. Now don't y'all go calling your boss tomorrow morning and say, I can't come into work because Miss Kim said I got to flag for seven days. No, 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 no. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord your God for seven days in, in the year. And it shall be a perpetual statute in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month, and you shall dwell in the booths for seven days. All who are native children of Israel will dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So basically what God was saying is, y'all are going to have this great celebration. Y'all are going to go down to the creek. Y'all going to chop yourself off some branches. And y'all going to wave those branches. Woo! Yay, God! Woo-hoo! God, yay! We love you, God! We love you, God! And they're just all going to have fun with their flags, which are actually branches. Now, Obviously, this does not mean that you take the chainsaw, you go out to your yard, 
and you start chopping off your branches. No, dear heart, your pastor does not want you dragging your branches into church and waving them around. And I really don't think the people around you would really like it. And I don't really think the squirrel that's in the branch that's flying off into the lady behind you would really appreciate it too. So do not cut off the branches of the trees and take them into church. No, we will use our cloth flags. That is a lot better. Cloth flags are a lot better. So what does God say about all of this? And where did all of this start? Well, it all starts for me. It started in Exodus 4. I like reading the Old Testament and every now and then I'll jump around and see what's around there. And the Lord laid this upon my heart. Now other people have gotten this same verse, same teaching. It's all over the internet. And the really wild thing about it is we don't talk to each other. No, we don't. I'm going to have my friends link right up here above with the little eye. When you see the little eye pop up, y'all need to click that because that's going to be her interview about the same thing where she kind of basically touches on it. I questioned her about it and said, wait a minute. I, God gave me the same thing about a couple of months ago. She said, oh, I did a teaching on this a few months ago. I'm like, You did, you did, you, you, you did what? It kind of amazed me. And then other people are like, oh yeah, God gave me that teaching. What? He gave you that teaching too? Oh my. Yeah, there's definitely something going on here. And that's when I knew, okay, I think I better get this teaching out here. But turn to Exodus 4. This is where it all begins for a lot of us. And the Moses said, now, okay, now, just to give you guys a backstory, God's called Moses, talked to him in the fire, firing bush. <laughs> we all seen, we've all seen 10 commandments. <laughs> Moses, Moses. And there's, <laughs> and he's like, oh, wait a minute, that bush ain't burning. It's on fire, but it ain't burning. That's kind of weird. And God said, to Moses, I want y'all to go talk to the Pharaoh guy over there. I want y'all to tell him, y'all need to let my people go free. You've been really mean to them, and I want them to be free. And we're going to just kind of tootle across the desert and go to this promised land. And Moses is saying, okay, um, God, I understand what you're saying, but I see a few flaws in our plan, your plan, may I say, and I would like to discuss these, uh, these, these, these uh, flaws with you. And God's like, really? I have flaws in my plan? Well, um, yeah, because, see, I, I kind of did some bad things in Egypt, and I kind of like scootled away across the desert, and I've been living here for a while. And I just don't know how they're going to take me. And God is saying, Moses, Really, seriously, dude, I'll put the words in your mouth. All you have to do is force the air out your lungs, through your pipes, in your throat, out the mouth, da, 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 use the tongue to form words, and words go out into ears. And Moses is like, um, God, I can't even see a flaw in that. And God basically says to Moses, well, I, once you tell the children of Israel, we're all tootling across the desert. And you're going to tell Pharaoh, you're going to let my people go. So we can all tootle across the desert. And uh, Moses is saying, God, again, flaws. And Moses answered and said, but they're not going to believe me. And they're not going to listen to me. Who am I? For they will say, the Lord has not appeared before you. God, seriously, these people are going to lock me up. They're going to put me in the loony bin. I'm going to have a one-way ticket to an insane asylum. Is God, this is going to be bad. God said, what's in your hand? Moses is like, excuse me? What's in your hand? Uh, it's a, it's a big stick thingy. It's a staff thingy. It's a rod. My, uh. My uncle made it for me. Yeah, he's like in the business of making stuff. And so they gave this to me as a gift. And God said, throw it on the ground. Okay. So he threw it on the ground. And it became a snake. 
And Moses is like, oh, oh my gosh, it's a snake. And he ran away. Oh my gosh. He's like, God, you made a snake. And God's like, pick it up. I'm not going to pick that up. Pick it up. No, I'm not going to pick it up. It's a freaking snake. Pick it up by the tail. Okay, but if it bites me, this is going to be bad. Pick it up, Moses. So he picked it up and it turned back into a stick. <gasps> now see, if I would have done that, I would have just kept dropping it and picking it up and watching it turn into a snake and then picking it up and get all the road. It's a snake. <laughs> Pick it up. It's not on again. Throw it on the ground. Playing now. Can we continue on? You don't throw it down on the ground anymore. Yeah, I know, sweetheart. I know it turned into a snake. That's really great. Lord then said, this is so they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham and Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. And the Lord said furthermore to him, now put your hand into your bosom. So he put his hand in his coat, in his coat jacket there, put his hand in the coat jacket. And when he took it out, it was leprosy. Oh, oh, God, 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 I don't know what's worse. This steak is a leper. You can be it's leprosy, God. How is this supposed to help? And God said, put your hand back in your coat again. So he put his hand in his coat, brought it out. And, oh, oh, okay, you know what? We're, let's work with the stick again, God. I like that a lot better than the hand thing. He had to literally pick up the rod. He had to keep the rod in his hand. He had to keep the rod in his hands. He had to pick it up. It was in his hands. Boom, an action. There's a core spot. Now, you know what Moses could have said? Okay, God, it's just, I, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do this. I don't believe this. This is really stupid. I don't believe that you know, I don't, I don't believe that you can do this. I'm not going to do it. No, no. But Moses had faith in God. He had faith that when he <laughs> dropped that rod on the ground, it was going to turn into a snake. God did this with David and a slingshot. Ping! He took a slingshot. Ping! And bing the giant right in the head. What's in your hand? David used a slingshot. He used a little harpy. Oh, he got a hold of a little harpy and God used the harp. Jesus, Elijah, Elijah used his mantle or his cloak. He took his cloak. He took out his cloak. He had this mantle that he always wore. And a mantle is basically a sheepskin cloak that, you know, has never really been washed and probably something that it was just a sheepskin, sheepskin cloak. And so he would use it all the time for prayer, or he would use it to keep himself warm, or he would use it uh, to wrap himself up in, but he also used it for other things. There was a time in 2 Kings 2.16, Elijah took his cloak and went poop right over the Jordan River, and the Jordan River went whoop, all up against there and he just doo -doo 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 -doo. and it went bloop. Gosh. and everybody's going dude how how did, how did how did you do that i didn't do it god did it but but god did it don't worry about it it's fine you see what i'm saying god used and uh, i'm sorry to say this and i know this might sound bad but I pretty much doubt that he washed that sheepskin. I pretty much doubt that he washed it. I pretty much doubt that it saw the dry cleaners at all. It may have been stinky. It may have been dirty. But you know what? God used it. Why? Faith. Elijah had faith. What is faith? Faith is being confident that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. Elijah was 100% confident that if he took that mantle, boop, Jordan River. There it went. They tootled right across. It's faith. It's your faith in your heart. Jesus did the same thing with feeding the 5,000 in Matthew 14, 13. Here's all these people that came out to hear Jesus preach. 
they're getting a little hungry. They've been out here for three days. They're like ready to gnaw on each other's foot, feet. They're like looking at their neighbor going, oh boy, I bet you you'd be good with some sauce on top of you. Jesus is like, dude, we got to feed these people. He turned his disciples. You feed them. Well, we can't do anything. What, what is in your hand? Well, I got a little bit of bread and I got some little fishies. In other words, he had, basically he had Ritz crackers and tuna fish. Okay, God, here's a package of Ritz crackers and here's a couple of cans of tuna fish. Have everybody sit down. 5,000 people. Okay, how many people are you going to feed with five? How, how are you going to feed 5,000 people with just a sleeve of Ritz crackers and three cans of tuna fish? What is in your hands? Tuna fish and crackers. Whoop! Everybody got fed. There were tons of baskets left over that I'm sure Jesus then said, okay, let's go feed the poor. So then they went and they fed the poor. And then they probably donated some more bread maybe to the temple. And by the end of the day, yeah, just about everybody was fed. <laughs> everybody in all of Israel was just about fed. Again, what's in your hand? Again, we see this in Acts 19.11. And let's, let's read Acts 19.11 because I think this is really good. 8, Acts 19.11. God worked powerful miracles by the hands of Paul. So handkerchiefs, handkerchiefs, aprons, little aprons around the waist, little aprons, handkerchiefs, aprons that he touched. What's in your hand? He touched them. What's in your hand? And these were brought to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. What is in your your hand it does not matter to God what it is as long as there is something the flags the handkerchief the staff these are not magic none of this is magic this is not a Harry Potter wand you're a wizard Harry but how can I be a wizard I just live under the closet, under the stairs. You're a wizard, Harry. No, this is not a Harry Potter wand. There is no magic in a handkerchief. There is no magic in a veil. There is no ha magic in a flag. I don't care what that flagger said. There is no magic in that flag. It is what is in your hand. What are you holding right now? It's not the flag that does it. It's your face. It's you hooking up with the Father through worship. It's you thinking about the words of the song and thinking about God and thinking how great God is and thinking about how good God is and thinking about how amazing God is and just letting your mind pour and pour and pour and go over and go over and go over and pouring your heart to him as you're doing your flagging and as you're worshiping and as you're doing this, God is starting to move and he's starting to change the atmosphere. God changed the atmosphere with that staff. He changed it. It went from one from doubting to going, oh, I don't know about this. Elijah changed the atmosphere by taking his cloak and going, boop, on the Jordan River. We change the atmosphere by using our flags. How do we do it? By trusting in God. 